The Roman Catholic Church has performed countless exorcisms, but they're not the only faith where religious figures battle demonic possession. Are these stories tales of human madness, fraud, or something genuinely supernatural? These are 10 of the creepiest exorcisms ever performed outside the Catholic Church. Number 10. An Ancient Ritual Exorcisms are rare in Judaism and are even more rarely performed in the modern day, but that doesn't mean Jewish people don't have their own spirits to fear. Dibbics aren't demons, but they are chaotic spirits that are notorious for causing trouble, throwing objects around the home and haunting people's dreams. They rarely enter people's bodies and possess them, but a manuscript fragment dating back to the 1800s indicates that if the Dibbics start to get a taste for possession, the Jewish religious authorities are prepared. It all started with a death. A woman named Kamar, living in the Middle East, had lost lost her husband several years back, but the widow had found love again and was ready to move on. But her late husband wasn't. According to the manuscript, he had become a divic and possessed her. Her terrified groom-to-be brought her to the temple where the rabbi used a rarely seen prayer to bless the new family, expel the ghost, and grant protection from it in the future. How often is the ritual used? It's a rare occurrence, but rabbis apparently have some demon-banishing skills in their back pocket. But not every exorcist is on the level. Number 9. A Twisted Rite Islam has long had exorcism in its traditions dating back to the early days of the faith. The rituals pioneered by Muhammad included expelling demons and curing the possessed. Common techniques involved a sheikh placing a hand on the possessed, reciting a prayer, and sprinkling holy water. But some radical members practiced more extreme rites, and they preyed upon one desperate woman in 2004. Latifa Hachmi, a young Belgian woman, was desperate to have a baby and couldn't solve her infertility. She met a group of exorcists who convinced her she was possessed and needed the demons driven out of her, but they had far worse intentions. The exorcists, Hashmi's husband, and three women who were brought in to assist in the ritual proceeded to put Hashmi through months of rituals, including forcing her to drink holy water. It didn't cure her infertility, but the forced hydration filled her lungs with water and she became ill. When she was found, she had passed away, her lungs incapable of taking in air, and her body covered in bruises. All the people who participated in the exorcism were arrested and charged with murder, as religious authorities warned not to be taken in by self proclaimed miracle workers, but other places still revere their exorcists, especially after tragedy. Number 8. A Haunted Town The town of Ishinomaki, Japan, was devastated in the 2011 tsunami that was one of the country's worst disasters, and in the aftermath people believed something terrible was happening. Ghosts were everywhere. Traumatized survivors suffered from horrible visions, seeing ghosts missing their heads wandering around town. Taxi drivers became superstitious, refusing to pick up passengers in haunted areas, and many people believed their own home was haunted by spirits, often of loved ones who died in the tsunami but were unable to move on. And one woman claimed she could help. Kancho Aizawa had been performing exorcisms for years, but her services were more in demand than ever. She was contacted by a man named Shinichi Yamada who had survived but was now experiencing disturbing things in his home. His children were ill. He was lying in bed and felt a supernatural force stepping on his chest. Aizawa advised him to find a proper shrine for two Buddhist statues he had rescued during the tsunami, and the supernatural event stopped after he relocated. Him. Is Aizawa truly banishing spirits from Ishinomaki? No one can say for sure, but the locals swear by her help. But much further south, an attempted exorcism went horribly wrong. Number 7. New Zealand Horror Janet Moses was troubled. The young Maori woman had recently lost her grandmother and had relationship problems with her partner. Her family wondered if there was something deeper going on here and if it had to do with a petty crime they'd committed. Some family members had stolen a lion statue from a nearby hotel, and a local Maori elder advised them that they should return her in a statue and help her heal. Her family took that to mean they should perform a makutu lifting, a Maori exorcism ritual. There was only one problem. None of the family members had any experience in the ancient spirit banishing ritual. While the elder had blessed her, he soon left and the family performed an improvised ritual that involved far too much water. The carpet became soaked. Family members injured Janet as they attempted to pick the demons out of her and eventually she died from drowning, leading to the arrest of nine members of Moses' family. A teenage family member was also injured in the ritual and the trial lasted 29 days and led to much debate over the religious rite. But ultimately, no one went to jail, with the coroner stating that only trained elders should perform makutu liftings. Number 6. The Hidden Temple In the Hindu faith, exorcisms are an ancient tradition, and one journalist got to see them in person. When Christoph Iwanek traveled to the Balaji Temple in 2011,
2018, he wasn't sure what to expect. The famous center of the Hindu exorcisms was located 200 kilometers from Delhi and is named after a local deity famous for banishing spirits. Known as Buts, these beings can supposedly enter humans and put them into trances. But as he entered the temple without a camera and staying in the shadows, Iwanek discovered that what was going on inside was both fascinating and disturbing. He would see things that would stay with him for the rest of his life. Those brought to the Balaji temple believed themselves to be possessed. Some were in trances, others were chained up. Iwanek was shocked to find a group of people chained to the temple's back wall. He saw a woman slide down the stairs like a snake, springing up without a bruise. The priests and the crowd watching them performed rituals in song and dance, and the possessed individuals joined in, occasionally reacting violently as if something was pulling them back. Eventually, the woman seemed to be free of whatever was possessing her and was released. Iwanek was puzzled, not quite understanding what he had seen. But the lure of the Balaji temple continues to bring supposedly possessed to its door. While most exorcisms are Christian, not all are Catholic. Number 5. Depression or Demons Nurse Amy Stamatis had been troubled for a while, having dark thoughts urging her to do harm to herself. It culminated when she fell out of a window at her home, leaving her paralyzed from the waist down and leaving many people wondering if she had jumped. She denied it, but wondered if she was going through a mental breakdown. She received visits from religious leaders in the community, and one claimed she had another explanation for Stamatis' disturbed thoughts and erratic behavior. She saw the presence of demons in Amy Stamatis. Cindy Lawson was a Pentecostal evangelist who was known for her demon castings and claimed to have banished 10 demons from worshippers. She visited Stamatis and claimed to be immediately able to see the demons surrounding her. After anointing the injured woman with oil and saying a prayer, Lawson claimed the demons were gone, and Stamatis agreed. While she has no memory of the exorcism, she claims that the thoughts that were plaguing her are now gone. Many doctors and psychologists believe this was a psychological influence rather than the supernatural, but Lawson and Stamatis remain staunch believers. But half a world away, an exorcism took a horrible twist. Number 4. The Tanaku Exorcism In the aftermath of the collapse of the communist government in Romania, the Romanian Orthodox Church had made a comeback. But one nun who joined the monastery in Tanaku would soon become famous for all the wrong reasons. Marisika Irina Cornici had a hard life before she joined, spending time in an orphanage after her father's death. But she behaved oddly, giggling uncontrollably during mass. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia and returned to the monastery, but her brother had another theory. He claimed that he had seen Satan enter his sister. He chose to report this to the priest, a tragic mistake. Daniel Peter Corgianu had a checkered past of his own, turning to the priesthood when he didn't gain admission to law school. He had frequent conflicts with the local diocese and saw the exorcism as a chance to make a name for himself. He ordered the nuns to bind Cornici's feet and hands and lock her in a room. They would later drag her into a church tied to a cross and leave her there for three days with a towel in her mouth to keep her from screaming. They claimed to cure her, but shortly after they brought her back to her room, she fainted and died from dehydration and exhaustion. Corgianu and the nuns who had helped him were all arrested, with the priest eventually being sentenced to seven years. One of the most terrifying exorcism stories ever traces back to 19th century Germany. Number 3. Terror in the Village Gottlieben Dittus was an unassuming young German woman in 1842, but villagers soon noticed her behaving oddly. She started by claiming that her house was haunted and later fell into strange trances. It would be the start of a descent into madness for the German woman, and it would attract the attention of one of the most famous religious scholars of the era, the Lutheran theologist Johann Blumhardt. The fast-rising writer would visit the town and begin the process of exercising Dittus, but it wouldn't be an easy fight. In fact, the affair would become known as Blumhardt's Battle. Dittus became violent as soon as Blumhardt arrived, having to be restrained. It would be two years of Blumhardt performing different exorcism rituals which led to horrific reactions. Blumhardt's writings would later claim that Dittus vomited objects including glass and nails, but eventually the demon cried, Jesus is the victor, and was gone. Did all this happen as claimed? No one's sure, but Blumhardt's followers believed and it led to him starting a new branch of Christianity. His parish grew, as did his territory, and his mission adopted the demon's last cry as its iconic motto. One British case asked, was it murder or possession? Number 2. The Strange Case of Michael Taylor in 1974, Michael Taylor worked as a butcher, but the quiet West Yorkshire man had a dark side. He had an affair with the leader of a local Christian fellowship group and later admitted that he felt as if there was evil in him. The local Anglican priest
priest watched as Taylor became more erratic and gathered other priests to lead an exorcism. It was an all-night ceremony and the priests believed that they had successfully banished over 40 demons from the man, including those driving him to blasphemy, lewdness, and adultery. Taylor was allowed to go home, supposedly cured, but not all of his demons were gone. Not long after the exorcism, Taylor turned on his wife Christine and brutally killed her. He was later seen wandering the streets covered in blood and quickly arrested. But everyone knew about the exorcisms that had come before. Was Taylor truly a killer or had something evil been left in him? That question confused the jury so much they found him not guilty by reason of insanity. The possibly possessed killer spent only four years locked up and was released, where he's been behaving erratically for almost 50 years since. But one case fascinates exorcism aficionados to this day. Number 1. The Yachtin Demonic It was 1778 when Joseph Easterbrook, the Anglican vicar of Temple Church, was summoned to the small village of Yatton. The subject was a tailor named George Lukens, who many in the village believed was possessed. The humble man had begun singing and screaming in ways that didn't sound human. While he had previously been a church-going man, he had since begun acting in disturbing ways. Doctors were unable to diagnose him, so the town had turned to the church. And when Easterbrook had questioned Lukens, the man made a frightening claim. He said there were seven demons inside him. Lukens had issued a challenge. The seven demons could only be banished by seven clergymen, and Easterbrook gathered many of his fellow Anglican friars. Through a night of intense prayer and rituals, the clergy claimed to have banished the demons and Lukens himself boasted he was cured. The aftermath saw the case become one of the most documented and studied incidents of demonic possession ever, and led to much debate. Was George Lukens a true possession case, a lunatic, or a fraud? Those who believe in demonic possessions are still trying to find the answer to this today. For more on the ultimate evil, check out How the Devil Was Born, or watch The Demonic Possession of the Nuns of London for a famous case that pitted the Catholic Church against demons.